We're going to see this tutorial. In this chapter, we're going to talk about the security flow around the account and transaction APIs. The idea really is to focus on the security features that are around the APIs, and we're going to use the transactions API to show you how it's done. So first, let's introduce the actors. So we got Alice, um, which is called the PSU. We we'll own the data basically. We got the bank, and we're going to use Fortjob Mod Bank later on, which own, which has the data stored in the database. And we got a developer, which is probably you, um, that wants to consume all these data that are hosted in the bank. So let's see how those three people can agree to to share the data in a secret manner. It's a six steps process really. The first one is between the developer and Alice. You're going to make sure that Alice understands that you want to access her data and what kind of data you want to access, transaction, balance, etc. The next one is between the bank and the developer. What you want to do is prepare at the consent and say to the bank that you're going to access and what kind of thing you want to access. The third one is when everything is ready, the developer is going to redirect Alice to the bank with some context and the bank will be able to authenticate Alice and show the consent and making sure that Alice understand that uh, what kind of information she's sharing and making sure that at step one, the TPP shows some information they wanted to access and that's indeed the information that she sees on step three. Once Alice has consented and everything is good, the bank is going to issue a token and redirect that token back to the TPP. So at this point, because it goes through Alice and you want to make sure just the developer get it, there is this step called the token exchange, which basically makes sure that only the TPP can get the real key, right? So the token is public, but only the TPP with its credential can account actually convert it to an access token, to a real key. So that's what this step is about. When the TPP I got the key, um, it can just use that key to access the data and call the bank API using that key. Once you got the data, well, you do what you want to do, right? And the, the last step really is about presenting the service uh, using the data. You may not even present the data to Alice, you know, you may have done some analysis, some security risk or whatever. So let's see more in details all this six step. We will concentrate mainly from the constant preparation really, because that's, uh, that's the main challenging part for the developers. Right, so step one is uh, you're going to authenticate Alice and present a constant page. And as you can see, you just make sure that Alice understand what she's doing and what kind of information you want. So here we want the account details, the balance, and the transactions. As a concept preparation, it's only between the developer and the bank. And basically, you want to prepare the consent by sending what kind of information you're going to ask access. So here you send that you want access the account, the balance and the transactions. And you send that in a secret manner so through TLS, but with also MITLS, so you basically authenticate yourself at the same time. So the bond can verify who you are, authenticate you and bind this consent to you, the developer. So once you've done that, then the bank save it in the database and return you a consent ID, which is a reference to that consent. And when Alice is going to see the bank, she's going to need a context about what she's doing there. And this is this consent ID that you're going to use for that. So for that, you, you generate what we call a request parameter. A request parameter is a message signed, and inside the message signed by you, you're going to put the consent ID, and you're going to embed that 
into the request that AM is going to go to the bank. So you basically, you do a redirection to Alice to the bank with this request parameter. Uh, technically, it's a get parameter, right? So you just put it in the get parameter. And so when Alice actually go to this page, to the bank, the bank is able to retrieve the constant ID, which is the main information. So this is what is happening at step six, right? So the Alice is authenticating, a bank is loading the consent from the database via the consent ID that you send on the request parameter, and the bank is able to show that, right? You want to access the account details, the balance of the transaction, which allow Alice to confirm that it's indeed what she agreed at step one with the TPP. When she approves the request, the bank is going to use the same method. It's going to redirect Alice to the developer through the callback that you registered at the dynamic registration. So what the TPP is going to receive is an ID token, which is signed by the bank and contain the code hash and state hash, plus a code, which is kind of the token we were talking about earlier, and the state, which allows you to retrieve the context from the initial uh, request. Because it's kind of state um, asynchronous, right? It allows the TPP to actually load the context that was initially triggering the flow. So why an ID token or all of that is because the ID token is signed, right? So as as allows the TPP to verify that uh, the code hash that is signed by the bank is equal to the code. So it's kind of a security um, step here, really. Um, but the essential information is you get the code, right? And once you get the code, Anyone can get the code in a way, right? Um, but the important bit is that you are the only one to be able to exchange it to an access token. And because the reason for that is because you're doing that through MATLS. As you can see, that you're putting your credential, which is your transport certificate. And only you can actually do that because you are the only owner of the private key. So that allows the banks to be sure that the access token is only given to you. Even if Alice has saw the code somehow, you know, through the redirection, she's not able to do anything with it. Only you got the key. I know that you get the key. It's the easy bit, really. It's you only need to do a risk call using that key as a bearer token, and you get the data from Alice. The bank is able, through this access token, to do all the verification that they need, reading the consent ID, making sure it's been approved, and return exactly the data for what Alice has been sharing the consent for. Once you got the data, well, you do whatever you like, really. Um, you know, example, we just doing some data during like an aggregator. But you can really do um, what any innovative ideas, which may not uh, do a data rendering to Alice. Let's see how it works with Photoshop Mobile Bank. And we directly go to the consent preparation because step one is about Alice and the developer and how to do the consent. That's really up to you how you want to do that. So what you need to do at this step is to create an access consent. And as you can see in the middle, there is this kind of fingerprint. So that means that you need to be authenticated to be able to do that. And the way it's done in open banking is using the client credential flow. So you basically get an access token and this access token is what you need to use to actually create the consent. So let's do that. So as you can see that when you go to access preparation in Postman, you get three requests. And the first one is a client assertion, which is a shot that is used to actually get the access token. This is the way we choose to authenticate it. There is three different ways and the client assertion is one of them. So it's a chart that you actually sign, and if you choose the conversion correctly, then it, it can be used as a notification method. So you call the access token at endpoint of AM using the client credential flow, which is basically sending those three parameters, and that gives you a key. This key is very limited, and it can only allow you to create and read consent. And we're going to store that in Postman memory just to make it easier to use. So now you can actually create a consent. Um, so you put the access token in the header, right? So making sure that it's only you that can create a consent. And it's binding to your developer, uh, to your TPP, right? That's important. 
you set basically what kind of permission you want so that's what Alice agreed so we get everything in the example and as a response the banks agreed there's no problem it's returning you the same kind of a payload that you request but with three different things the constant ID and the status telling you that you are requesting authorization we just done step two on step three by the bank and we got the constant ID. So what we need to do now is to create the request parameter, embedded the constant ID in there, and redirect Alice to the bank with this request parameter as a get parameter. So let's see how you can do that. All right, so you go to the next step, which is generate the request parameter. And you can see it's basically a jot. So you use the document as what we use in dynamics registration. And you embedded the constant ID in there. And you should see that in a, in Postman, there is a constant ID in the memory. So it's going to be replaced automatically. All right, so you create this jot, which is just a base 64, as you can see there. And you're going to embed that in the request. And you can see that in the get parameter, uh, there is a request parameter at the end, right? So basically we want Alice to follow that request, right? So you, what you do is um, we use post, a postman trick, which is basically being able to generate that request, but you don't execute it. You actually go uh, to your web browser because Alice is going to use a web browser, right? Not going to use postman. So we simulate the redirection. So Alice sees that. So we are Alice at the moment. Well, we're going to use Tutu for to be honest here. So we authenticate, right? And the bank is able to reload the consent and it's going to say, right, this is this TPP. And you can see that this is the one we, we done during the onboarding. You got your logos that you put uh, in the directory. And it's showing you that you, the different bank accounts that you have. And you can uh, select, select the account that you actually want to share. The TPP doesn't really kind of really unfold that. You really choose that at this point as Alice. And you get a different permission that the TPP is trying to access. Once you agree, all you need to do is to click on proceed. And what is happening there is that you get a redirection to the callback. And if you remember during the dynamic registration, we uh, use the google.com for that. And it's just because we, as we're using Postman, we don't really want to also service. So we just thanks to Google, we can actually have a direction happening and extract the code from um, the um, the queries. We just did step six and seven, and as you can see, we're on Google and we are at step seven. So what we need to do is getting the code and exchange it. Right. We're going to skip step eight because it's all about security and verifying. It's important to do, right? I'm not saying the contrary. It's just for understanding it. I think we can skip it that for now. And when you get more time in doing the real implementation, you can actually do step eight. But don't forget to do it, right? Very important step to do. So we're going to directly jump to step nine. So step nine is about taking the code that is in the URI in google.com, right? And sending it to the bank. Uh, but for that, we need to have, um, we need to authenticate. You, know, you see the fingerprint, so this is uh, a not scary endpoint. And we're going to use our transport certificate for that. Let's go back to Google. So from the URI and the fragment, you can extract the code. So just copy it and let's go back to Postman with it. All right. So go to Token Exchange. In there, you get in the body. You get the code. So just replace the code here. Right? Automat obviously, you can do that automatically. But for the Postman experience, you have to do it manually. So you send this, and as you can see, you get the access token. So this access token has more uh, power than the previous one. It got the consent inside. So that's why we're going to call it the access token with consent inside. Now that you get the access token with the consent, you can actually use it to get the resources. You can do any of them. Uh, we're going to do the slash accounts. Um, I'll let you do the other one for the fun. Uh, in the header, you send the token, and as a response, uh, you can see that you get the payload. So you successfully uh, managed to get uh, the data. And what we do in the postman, just to show you, is that we're actually storing the account ID 
um, in the memory, you know, just of the first account, you can see it's hard coded. But that allows you to do the, you know, this kind of request which are asking you to have a specific account. So it's, a, it's, for, it's just for the Postman experience, really, right? And we can do, for example, getting the transaction for that account, right? And you get all the information you need. So I think that from there, a lot of you will have a lot of ideas on what you can do with this transaction. Maybe good things to mention at this point is that there's some links and there's pages, right? So you can actually like um, go through that endpoint and do like page equal, I don't know, um, page equal five, and then you get the transaction from the the fifth page of uh, of the transactions, right? So that's how you get all the transactions. You get them uh, for full draw, I think it's ten transactions, but some may return more than that, maybe less. It's up to them really. You get also the bulk endpoint, which is slash transaction. So this time there is no account ID. Uh, so you get really all the transactions of the users. It's maybe what you want, I don't know. I mean, you can see there's many more pages, right? So it's really up to you on how you want to access the data. So thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to put a like or to subscribe. And I see you to the next tutorial.